All right, with any luck, this should be our last video on configs. I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about a couple of exceptions that we have on the electron configurations. Um, orbitals, in general, like to be, if I'm to use the analogy of atoms as people, to have an orbital be happy, if you will, energetically stable is the more chemically appropriate term. But a happy orbital is either half full, full, or empty. So if my electron configuration ends in a number that's close to full, half full, or empty, the atom is going to shift its electrons around in an attempt to make as many orbitals as possible full, half full, or empty. So for example, uh, this is going to happen in the D and F orbitals that we talked about last time. So if you remember, the D block was here in the center. The F block is down here. So if we were to do the electron configuration of something like chromium, for example, Chromium, according to the periodic table, has 24 electrons that I need to place. off bow principle says, gotta start at 1. 1s2, in case you forgot, 1s1, 1s2, whoop, ran out of real estate. 2, 2s1, 2s2, slide your finger all the way across. I'm still on row 2. This is the P block, so this is 2P. 2P6, ran out of real estate, wrap around to 3S2, 3P6, 4S2. And then remember, we're filling these in order of lowest to highest energy. And so you would think that on the fourth row, we just went through the S, that 4D would be the next lowest in energy, but in fact it is 3D. And since we're doing chromium, 1, 2, 3, 4, D, 4. So we said that... Atoms, whenever possible, their orbitals like to be, are more energetically stable, excuse me, they like to be full, half full, or empty. Well, all of these guys up to this point are full. This guy is almost to half full. Our d orbital can hold a grand total of five electrons, so we are one electron away from that happy half full state. So, my atom is going to shift his electrons around a bit in an attempt to have that orbital be half full as well. So, what will happen is one electron will be taken from my 4s and be promoted into my d. So, that means that now all of these orbitals are full, half full, half full, much more energetically stable. If we were to draw the spin diagram for this one, don't forget that even if all of the rooms in a particular orbital are not filled, you still have to draw all of the blanks in the P's and D's, for example. Also remember to put one electron in each blank before you start doubling up. So I started off with two electrons in this blank and four over here in my D. This electron quite literally gets moved from there to there. So that now I have two orbitals that are half full. This is the first example of such an exception. So families of elements tend to have similar properties. So chromium, molybdenum, tungsten, seaborgium will all do this same trick whenever you write their electron configuration. Um, another example is an element such as copper. Copper has 29 electrons that I need to place. Offbow says, got to start at 1. Hopefully by this time you're able to kind of read them off the table at this juncture. So I'm going to go through this pretty fast. Let's see, 3D, and if we count across to copper, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. D9 in copper. D9, so close to the full D orbital of D10. So once again, we will promote one electron from the 4s into the 3d. Now, all of these orbitals are full. This guy is half full. This guy is full. 
This is a much more energetically stable arrangement for this atom's electrons. And again, copper, silver, gold, all three of these elements do this same thing. Um, let's see, the f orbital does that as well. Something like europium, Europe, yep, europium, EU, has 63 electrons to place. Phew, here we go. 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. Remember, there's nothing weird about... Ooh, you can't even see what I'm doing. There we are. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, after we finish the Ds, there's nothing weird about the Ps, so we go back to the row that we were actually on. Um, what comes after 4p6? Let me see. 4p6, ah, 5s2, 4d10... 5p6, ooh, I'm running out of space here, 6s2, after 6s2, remember this is the weird thing, 6s2, 5d1, and then we follow the black brick road, I guess, it's going to lead us down here, one would think we're on row 6, maybe it's 6f would be next in our energetic levels, uh, or perhaps even 5, since this is 5D, but no, this is actually 4F. So 4F, and then we count over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5F, 6. Remember to be careful on your periodic table. Lanthium and actium are, in fact, D elements, or D orbitals. This is a D orbital spot. So make sure if your periodic table puts those right here, at the front of your F block, they belong in the Ds. They are not Fs. You cannot have 15 electrons in the F. Not possible. So, once again, energetically stable would be full, half full, or empty. All these guys are full. We have this poor lone soul. So you will see two things occasionally you will see happen. Um, if you're following this same trick up here, we'll promote one out of the S, into the F. And you're going to have to see how your particular professor deals with this. Um, because I have also seen people combine this D into this 4F here to get this up to that F7. Since 7 is a half full orbital for the um, F. 7 is half full for the F orbital, sorry. Um, uh, this is the way that I teach it in my classrooms, just because it is easier to memorize one rule instead of two. And I've seen both methods done. So at this juncture, I don't know which is more correct than the other. So if you know, let me know, so that I can be better informed. But for now, I'm going to continue uh, my original method to promote one from the S into the 4F. So now I have all of these that are full, half full, half full. And then this guy's just weird. So I hope that uh, clears up a little bit about the F orbitals. Um, the F will also do the same thing towards the end if you end up with something ending in F13. That will also require one to be promoted from the S or the combination with that D as well. So let me know if you do, uh, perhaps you have taken uh, higher level chemistry stuff than me. My memory is a little bit rusty on that higher stuff. Um, so that I can know which method is better with regards to the F. They always work tricky, those Fs, but that's all right. So best of luck in your exceptions with these orbitals. Remember, they can only be in the Ds or the Fs. Ss and Ps don't do the promoting thing. Only the Ds and the Fs. Best of luck.